Good morning, church. Amen. Before I open up with the word, uh, I want to remind you guys to keep Brother Jesse in prayer. And Annie, mostly Jesse, he's in the hospital. I had to take him back. I'm not allowed to give the details right now, but keep him in your prayers, people. He needs a healing from God. Amen. Sometimes we all need a healing from God. It doesn't have to be physical. It could be mentally. It could be spiritually. Amen. But this morning, I do want to pose a question to each and every one of you that are here this morning. How many people want to better their lives? How many people want better things to happen in your life? Amen. I know that I do. I want the best that God has to offer to me. Amen. And this morning, I want to share with all of you, and I want to continue with this teaching that I've been on, on the blessed assurance, because we all should have enough faith to believe on the assurance of God and on the blessings of God and on the promises of God. Amen? Amen? Yes. Are you guys awake? Yes. I'll pull up my horn. Amen? Amen? But this morning, I want all of you to turn over to the book of Jeremiah. I want to pick it up where I left off last week. Amen. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 15, I'll give you a few seconds for all the Bible scholars that are here this morning. You should know automatically where it's at. One of these days, they're going to invent a book where all you got to do is push a button. It's going to take you directly to that. Well, you guys already got it in your cell phones, huh? You know, sometimes I look at people with their cell phones and I'm giving a scripture. I'm not really sure if you're looking at the scripture or you texting. <laughs> or are you back on Facebook instead of this book? Amen. Because I've seen some people in churches, they, they, they sit in the back with their phones on and they're acting like they're following the pastor with everything that he's saying. And little by little, they find out that they're texting somebody. Amen. Look, if, if you're not using your phones and your cell phones for the word, shut it off. Shut it off because you're disrespecting the word of God. I got to tell you the truth. You're disrespecting the word of God by getting into your cell phones and trying to text somebody. Amen. Don't worry about it. They can meet you after church. Amen. Amen. But in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 15, are you there? Starting in verse 15. I want to talk about the blessed assurance. How many people have the assurance that God will bless you? Amen. I'm going to give you so much scripture today, people. And I tell you what, there's so much that God has been downloading into my heart concerning the assurance that we should have and our trust and our confidence that we should have in God and His Word. Amen? Amen? Jeremiah 15, starting in verse 15, he says, O Lord, you know, tell somebody, O Lord, you know. Lord, you know. Okay, now you're making confessions to God that He does know. Because God knows everything. Tell somebody, God knows everything. No, God knows everything. You can't hide from God. Jonah tried to hide from God. And look where he wound up. Amen. He says, O Lord, you know, remember me and visit me. And take vengeance for me on my perse persecutors. In your enduring patience, do not take me away. Know that for your sakes I have suffered rebuke. He says, your word, your words were found and I ate them. And your word was to me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by your name. You know that we shouldn't be abusing the name Christian as an abuse. Some people abuse their name as Christians because they go out there and do whatever they want. And then when people find out that you're a Christian and you were dabbing and tapping into things that you're not supposed to be doing... I'm speaking truth here this morning, people. To not people here in the church, but also on Facebook and YouTube or wherever you're at. Amen. He says, your words were found and I ate them. And your word was to me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. 
Look, I did not sit in the assembly of the mockers, nor did I rejoice. I sat alone because of your hand. You know, sometimes, <laughs> thank you, Father, sometimes you're going to have to separate yourselves from people and sit alone with God. No, and sit alone with God and let God speak to you. Amen? He says, I did not sit in the assembly of the mockers, nor did I rejoice. I sat alone because of your hand, for you have filled me with indignation. Why is my pain perpetual and my wounds incurable, which refuses to be healed? Will you surely be to me like an unreliable stream and waters that fail? You think that God is going to fail you after you ask him? Remember when the word of the Lord says in the book of Matthew, ask and you shall do what? You shall receive. But if you're waiting to receive from God, don't be procrastinating when you're asking God. Amen? Don't go around with this fret mentality of not knowing or this anxiousness of when, Lord, when, Lord, when, Lord, when, Lord, when God says so. No, when God says so. Amen. But in verse 19, this is where the Lord begins to reassure Jeremiah of everything that he's going through. Because see, back in those days, every time that Jeremiah walked into the city, they knew that he was going to come with rebuke. They knew that he was going to come with correction and instructions. And these people hated Jeremiah. You know why? Because Jeremiah was pulling them out of their comfort zone. Too many people are too comfortable to where they're at and they're not willing to surrender like my wife said. There's going to be a time and a day, people, where you're going to have to surrender everything to God. And you may have to let go of some things in order to surrender to God. Amen? Amen. But in verse 19, the Lord begins to reassure Jeremiah. He says, therefore, thus says the Lord, verse 19, if you return... No, if you return, then I will bring you back, and you shall stand before me. If you take out the precious from the vile, oh my God, people, that means separation. Amen. You shall be as my mouth. Let them return to you, but you must not return to them. That's a heavy verse, people. Amen. Let me go back again and, and read this. Look, if you return, what does that mean? Look, when I started reading that, I started really thinking about what does God really mean? Amen. Keep your fingers right there and go back to the book of Revelations. Amen. It's in the back. The last book of the Bible. Amen. Amen. How many people know that the book of Revelations is a book of a revolution? There's a war that's going on in here, people, if you read it. Amen. In the book of Revelation, chapter 2, talking about returning. And this is Jesus speaking to the loveless church, the church at Ephesus. He says, to the angel of the church of Ephesus, write, these things says, he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands, I know your works. Tell somebody, I know your works. Oh my God, people, that is heavy. That is heavy. Jesus knows your works. Jesus knows what you're doing, what you're up to. You can't hide nothing from God, people. He knows your works. Amen. Yeah. Verse 2, he says, I know your works. I know your labor. And I know your patience. And that you cannot bear those who are evil. Don't you hate to be around people who are evil and ugly and wicked? Huh? And you have tested, look, and you have tested those who say that they are apostles and are not and found them to become liars. And found them to become like, look, he's talking about apostles here. He's talking about the heads of the church. He's not talking about 
uh, prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers. He's talking about apostles. And Jesus sees right through them. And he knows what these men are up to. Amen. And they found out that they were liars, cheating and lying. Amen. Fleecing the flock. No, fleecing the flock. Look, I don't understand this, okay? This is just me as your pastor. Look, I am the apostle of this church. But I'm not going to run. You better call me Apostle Bob. <laughs> or else I'm going to kick you out of the church. I don't get it why men and even women want that title so bad. Are they living up to the standards of what a true apostle is? No, are they? No, are they? Amen. You know that nobody can answer that but the apostles who are serving as an apostle. Look, I don't got nothing against apostles. I'm one too, but I don't claim. I don't go out there parading myself as one. Amen. But listen, this is Jesus speaking to the church today. Amen. Nowadays. Because there's too many apostles that are misleading people. You know, we don't need another conference. We don't need another meeting. What we need is God. We need the Lord's in our lives, people. We need to start getting down to the nitty gritty and start telling people how to correct their ways and their lives, their livelihoods, like my wife said, their marriage, your finances, and everything about you. Amen? He says, look, I know your works and your labor and your patience that you cannot bear those things who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles that are not, having found them liars. And you have persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake. And you have not become weary. Nevertheless, it says, I have this thing against you that you have left your first love. You know how many people are living the love of God? to the side, or they're putting it up on a shelf. Uh, I'll talk to you later, Lord. Oh, so you're going to talk to God when there's a need? When there's a pressing need? Huh? Look, I talk to the Lord every morning. Amen. That's just me. Amen. I got to spend time with God. I got to hear what God is saying to me. I got to see what God is saying to me about this church and this ministry. I got to hear what God is saying to me about my wife, our marriage, our household, our family. Amen. I got to see what God is saying to me about my future, our finances, and my health. Man, I got to stay healthy for this church. No, I have to remain healthy for this church. Man, I don't want to walk around with a cane or walk in here with a wheelchair. I don't have nothing. People, you need it, you need it. But I want to stay healthy. I want to remain healthy. There's too many things that I want God to do with me and through me. And even my wife. Amen. Look, I'm going to be 70 years old. I don't feel, I don't know how you're supposed to feel at 70. I don't. I can still do 50 push-ups in one minute. I can still do 20 pull-ups. I can still bench 300. I can do all these things. I'm doing things like Caleb was. Caleb was 85 years old. He says, I want that mountain, Lord. I'm going to be preaching till I'm 85, maybe 95. Who knows? I'm going to preach till the Lord says so. And the Lord said so. No, and the Lord said so. <laughs> Amen. But looking right here, it says, oh, my God. He says, nevertheless, I have found this thing against you that you have left your first love. How can anybody walk away from God? After the love of God, oh my God, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave up his only begotten Son, that whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but have what? Everlasting, Everlasting life. Amen. Amen. He loves us this much, but there's people in the body of Christ that are leaving their first love. They forget about when they said, Yes, Lord. Were you saying, Yes, Lord, because you were tired, because you were at the bottom of the barrel? Huh? Or you were eating pig's feet or pig's food like the prodigal son till he came to his senses. Amen. Is that what we have to do? Is that where we have to go? 
Look, nobody's going to take you to the bottom of the barrel but you. Amen? He says, nevertheless, I have this thing against you that you have left your first love. He says, tell somebody, remember. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen. Remember, oh my God, people, remember when you fell? Huh? Remember when we all fell? Huh? And we were up to no good before we came to God? Huh? You were at the bottom of the barrel, but you didn't care because there was a lot of people down there with you. Hey, when did you get here, buddy? Well, I've been here for a few years, man. What's it like? I don't know. I can't. I'm still. <laughs> I can't get out of this barrel. Amen. He says, remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent. Repent. Don't you know that you have to repent and surrender before grace falls on you? You have to repent. And surrender before the grace of God comes on you. You do. Grace is just not going to come on anybody. Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me for what I've done. Lord, forgive me for being who I am. Lord, forgive me for being hard-headed. Hard-headed. Man, what part of this? You know, I've been reading Proverbs on Wednesday nights about getting the knowledge and the wisdom, the understanding and the discernment to know when and where and what to do in life. People, it's not that hard. Why do you make your life so hard for yourselves? Why? Nobody does it but you. You choose to do what you want in life. Amen? Amen? Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, he says, repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you what? Unless you repent. This is Jesus speaking. Amen. You actually believe that I, got, that I want the Lord to remove the lampstand that he has placed in this church? Do you, want, do you want the angel of God that he has placed in this church to leave? Huh? I don't. I started thinking about it and I was reading that and I sat here this morning right there where I sit and I was talking to the Lord and I says, Lord, where is that lampstand and where is that angel? And I was sitting right here and the Lord pointed to me. He says, the angel of God is on this side, Pastor Bob, and the lampstand is on this side. This is what he showed me this morning. And I says, thank you, Jesus. And the flame is burning, people. Amen. You don't see it, but I see it in the spirit. Amen. And I see my angel buddy right here. Hallelujah. I don't know what his name is, but he's here. Amen. 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 He says, remember, therefore, verse 5, from when you have fallen, repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. But this you have, that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Here it comes, people. He who has an ear, let him hear. Amen. My wife said that. Let he who has an ear, let him hear. Maybe you need a box of Q-tips. <laughs> Doesn't it feel good when you put that Q-tip in your ear? Has anybody cleaned your ears with Q-tips? Doesn't it feel good? Does it make you go to sleep? Huh? I don't think we should do that. I think we should ream ourselves like this. Take all that junk out of there. Take all that wax that it still build up in you. That's why you can't hear the word of God. That's why you're not willing to hear what God has to say. You're all full of wax. Wax on and wax off. Amen? He says... He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, no, to him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Amen. 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 Now turn back, turn back, turn back to Jeremiah. I needed to share that with all of you concerning that one thing where he says, if you return, no, if you return, no, if you return, somebody return. Amen. Remember that song that Elvis used to sing? Return to sender. Ba -boom, boom, 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 boom. 
Jerry knows it. <laughs> Amen. He says, then I will bring you back. This is the assurance that God is giving Jeremiah. Because nobody liked Jeremiah in those days. He was hated from everybody. And yet he was weeping for everybody. Amen. He says, if you return, then I will bring you back. You shall stand before me. If you take out the precious from the vial, he says, you shall be as my mouth. Let them return to you, but you must not return to them. Amen. He says, I will make you, I will make you to this people a fortified, what? A fortified bronze wall. Then they will fight against you, but they shall not prevail against you. Amen. For I am with you to save you. And deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you from the hand of the wicked. And I will redeem you from the grip of the terrible. Oh my God, people. There's a spirit of terrible out there. There's a lot of terrible things going on. The Lord showed me that. And I said, oh my God, Lord. It's like a, I got a revelation of that word terrible. It's terrible. We're living in terrible times, aren't we? No, we're living in terrible times. That spirit of terrible is out there creating and, and, and causing terrible things. Not only in this world, in the United States, California, our surrounding cities, and maybe even in your home, terrible things are happening. Get rid of that terrible thing. Get rid of that terrible spirit and start rebuking those things out of your home and your life and your house, your job, your health, man. Oh, my God, people, I was just reading all this and the Lord just started putting all this in me. I says, oh, my God, there's so many terrible things that are happening. Man, how do we fight against those things? Amen. And he's telling us, look, I will redeem you. He says, I will bring you out of those things. No, I will bring you out of the terrible times. Man. Wake up to what God is saying here through His Word. His Word is real, people. Amen. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Oh, my God, people. Jeremiah 17. Oh, yeah. Jeremiah 17, starting in verse 5, he says, Cursed, he says, Cursed is a man who trusts in man and makes his flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord. For he shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land which is not inhabited. Verse 7, people, here's your assurance. Blessed is a man who trusts in the Lord. Blessed is a man who trusts in the Lord. How much confidence do you have in God? How much confidence do you have in His Word? How much confidence do you have in His, in his faith that He will perform it? Amen? Amen? Verse 7, it says, Look, blessed is a man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. We should have hope, people. We should have high hope. We should. We should have some high hope. Amen. Because hope is the evidence of things for things hoped for in, and it involves with faith because it's something good is about to happen in your near future, people. Amen. Blessed is a man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. He shall be like a tree planted by the waters which spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear when heat comes. Amen? Yeah. Look, I can see everybody that's in here right now. Okay? Has anything affected you ever since this COVID thing started? Has your finances dried up? No. no. Not mine. <laughs> I'm like that tree that's been planted by the waters. And my roots are deep. And in due season, man, when the drought comes, <laughs> man, man, I'm ready for that drought. 
All of you should be ready for the drought times that come. You should be putting something aside, but the Lord comes first. And then put some things aside for yourself. Because the droughts will come, people. Amen. Look at everything that... The, oh, man. We, we got a dumb president. I'm sorry to say that. We got a dumb president. Now he wants to inflict and mandate and get along with the IRS. That's the first time they've gotten along with the IRS. Amen. They want to say, if you got $600 in the bank, they're going to tap into your account. Because they really want to see how much money you really have. They want to see if you're hiding any kind of money that you haven't paid your taxes on. Wake up, people. Wake up to what's going on. Don't be so ignorant because I don't want to watch the news. It's just bad news. Well, the bad news can become good news if you pray. But there's too many things that are trying to go out there and mandating everything now. Amen. He says, and it will not fear when heat comes, but its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought. Nor will it cease from what? From seizing. And it says, it will not, it will not, and you and will not be anxious in the year of drought. What does Philippians 4 and 6 say? Somebody get up and read it for me. Who's got 4 and 6? Philippians 4 and 6. No, I want you to get up and read it to the congregation. Yeah, come here, babe. Nobody wants to volunteer to read the word. Man, you guys are crazy. Hey, this sounds better than my mic, doesn't it? Just read 4 and 6. Just read it. <laughs> it says rejoice in the Lord always again I will say rejoice <laughs> let your gentleness be known to all men the Lord is at hand be anxious for nothing okay stop right there just stay right there babe. be anxious for nothing that's what it means. Why do you get all anxious? Huh? Why do you allow your mind to get all messed up and jacked up when things are happening? Huh? Be anxious for nothing. But we do because we're carnal. We're carnal people and we're flesh people. And we don't know better and the word is telling us not to be anxious. What part of this word don't you believe? Go ahead, babe. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Keep reading. And the peace of God, which there it is, people. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. It's a promise. Thank you, babe. Now, let me read it. Okay. He says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer. No, by prayer. Amen. By prayer. So the next time your anxiousness rise up and your anxiety rise up and then stress walks in and says, can I come in too? Because I want to stress you out. Because you're too anxious and I can't just stand to see anxiousness be by itself. So can I come in and stress you out? That's good. Amen. So you're going to let anxiousness and anxiety all come in and mess you up. But the word of God has given us something here. Look, but in everything by prayer. Listen to me, you guys. As soon as you feel something that's coming and is rising up within your life, your marriage, your home, your now, no, I don't care what it is in everything, okay? Start praying. Start praying. You don't have to wait for your partner. You don't have to call your prayer partner. You don't have to call TBN. You pray. No, you pray. You don't even have to come to this altar and let us lay hands on you. You pray. Because I don't know what you're anxious for. I don't know what you're going through. Amen. We're not living in the same house. 
So when you hear bad news, turn it around and says, get behind me, Satan. I'm going into prayer. I'm going into prayer. Because the enemy came to kill, steal, and destroy, and he wants you to be anxious. He wants you to stress out. He wants all this anxiety to go up so you be all jacked up. Your health is going to affect your final. Everything, everything, everything is going to get affected. And the one thing that God is saying, pray. Knock on heaven's door. Lord, here I am. And I can hear you. So what's up, Pastor Bob? Well, you know. Yeah, because he does know. He knows that before it's going to happen. Amen. So be anxious for nothing, it says. Look, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God and the peace of God. Man, people, if we only knew what the peace of God really meant and is, you wouldn't be anxious for nothing. You wouldn't be all stressed out. You wouldn't allow anxiety to come in. You, would, you wouldn't care what you hear. Because you know that the peace of God is in you. Amen? Amen? That's why the Lord says, look, don't worry about it. Just leave, leave them alone. Let it go. Leave them alone. Amen? Amen? And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, it will guard your heart. Because that's where the enemy wants to hit you, people. Forget about your mind. He wants to hit your heart. Man, if he can mess with your heart, people, you know what? You might as well forget about your mind. Because you're not going to be able to think anyways. Because the hurt is so deep. And it hurts. It hurts, Lord. It hurts me. And God knows your hurts. God knows what you're going through. God knows what you've been through. Amen? But he wants you to guard your heart and your mind. Amen? Through Christ Jesus. So the next time you're going through something, and guess what, people? We will be going through some stuff. No, we will be going through some stuff. So the next time you're going through something, man, just stand there and pray. Start asking the Lord, Lord, heal my heart. Heal do. Do, God already knows what you're going through. man. My God, people... Amen. These people, everybody that walks into this church should already be well and equipped. That nothing's going to move you but the Holy Spirit. Amen. Seriously, people. Amen. Thank you, Father. So how do we begin to trust in the Lord? Amen. Let me tell you, let me give you a few golden nuggets here that the Lord put in my heart to share with all of you. What does it mean when you truly put your trust in God? Are you really leaning on God with total confidence to know that God can and He will? Huh? Do you know what trust bring, brings? It brings forth joy, people. Trusting in God brings forth joy. When you're so sad and weary, put your trust in God, and He's going to turn it around and bring joy back into your life. Amen? Oh, this, is, this one is good, people. He will deliver you from whatever you need to be delivered from. When you start trusting God and you need deliverance because you're still in bondage to something, I don't know what it is, but He can deliver you out of that mess. No, He can deliver you out of that mess. Amen. Amen. But you got to put your trust in God. Yes. You want the, 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 the assurance of the blessings of God? Put your trust in God. Yes. Let joy come in. Amen. Let deliverance come in. Lord, I, I need deliverance from this. Lord, you know where I'm at. Lord, you know that I'm, that I'm struggling with this. Man, I, I feel like I'm in bondage to this thing. And nobody knows that thing but you. Right? Right? Okay, now I want some agreement in here. Because nobody in here is perfect. No, nobody in here is perfect. There's some stuff still that is hanging, hanging on to you. And Suéltame. 
Let me go. 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 Amen. Man, you got to shake it up, people. And then if the devil can't get you behind you, he's going to stand in front of you. That's why, get behind me. Get behind me. Get behind me. Where's that holy water? That holy water ain't going to do nothing. Holy water ain't going to do nothing, people. All you're going to do is just wet them. Oh, thanks. I needed that. Amen. And trusting in God will bring triumph in your life. You will be victorious. Because the Lord says we are victorious in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Man, I'm, I'm enjoying this teaching this morning. Amen. And trusting in God brings God's goodness. And I always say, oh, yeah, everybody's, oh, God is good. Well, how good is he? He is really good. Amen. He is good. Thank you, babe. He is good all the time. And all the time he is good. Amen. And that's what happens, people, when you start truly putting your trust in God. He wants to pour down his goodness on you. No, he really does. He wants to shower you with goodness. How many people want good things from God? Amen. Oh, my God, people. I know that. I don't know. And trusting in God? Oh, my God, people. It will bring mercy. Man, to put our trust in God for the mercies of God? Look, oh, oh my God, you know what, well, Lord, I, I screwed up last night. I did wasn't what I wasn't supposed to do, and I did it anyways. And the Lord says, my mercies are new every morning. Yeah, that's I will forgive you. Yes, I will forgive you. Amen. Because he knows that we have weaknesses, people. We all have weaknesses in one area or another. We all fall short of the glory of God. Amen. Amen? Amen? But the mercies of God, to put our trust in God for his mercies, oh, my God. Oh, this is a good one, people. Thank you, Father. You put your trust in God for your provisions? Pastor Bob, are you going to start talking about tithing again? <laughs> no, I'm only talking so you can get a revelation of it. Because right. I did years ago. Yeah. Look, I know what God expects from me, and I got to do what God tells me to do. I don't care what you guys, you guys don't want to tithe, don't tithe. That's between you and God. You don't want to give what belongs to God? Then God ain't going to give what belongs to you. <laughs> what? Yeah, Do you see how quick God can turn those tables around? Yeah. Put the spinner right here, Lord. Let me see. <laughs> well, not today. <laughs> Amen. He will provide provisions for you if you put your trust in God. Amen. And I want to thank those people that have been sending their tithes, even through PayPal. Don't think that I don't know those things. I do know, and God knows it. And God has a reward to those who do what? Thank you. Diligent. That means that you're not going to give up. You're going to follow through. Don't let nobody tell you nothing else besides the word of God here. Amen. He will. He will. Amen. And then people putting your trust in God, there's, the, the, there's, there's an inheritance that waits for us. Amen. A mighty inheritance. Amen. A good inheritance. You know what awaits for us in heaven is more than what you got here on earth? Huh? You can take everything that you have right now, all your possessions. I don't care what you got in the closet. I don't care what you got in your jewelry, your leather, whatever you got. Amen. I don't care how many cars you drive or what kind of cars. Amen. There's a greater inheritance that awaits us that is more in heaven than here on earth. That's right. Come on, Amen. That's right. So why are you fighting with God when it comes to giving? It doesn't belong. You're not going to take it with you. Don't you know that Lord is testing you? Boy, sure is quiet in this Holy Ghost church, Pentecostal church. Amen. Thank you, Father. Turn over to the book of Psalms. Amen. No, I'm not stopping. <laughs> Psalms 40. Everybody thinks that when I say that. Amen. Psalms chapter 40 starting in verse 1. Amen. Are you there? Okay. Psalms 40, verse 1, it says, I waited patiently. Oh, yeah, right. 
No te desperes. God will show up. God will show up. Just be patient with God. Maybe he's trying to work out something in you and out of you. Amen? See, God can't put nothing in you till you get all that mess out of you. Oh, that's good. That's good t-shirt material. Where's Mona at? She should have wrote this one down. Okay, you got it. It says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my steps. And he has put a new song in my mouth. No, he has put a new song in my mouth. Amen. I tell you what, people. I say it before and I'll say it again. You shouldn't have Pastor Marsh out here trying to squeeze worship out of you. She shouldn't have to be begging you guys to worship. You don't want to worship the Lord? Then don't worship the Lord. That's up to you what you do with God. Amen? But my God, people, every week, you know, you know what she goes through to put all this music together? And Brother Jerry and, and Sister Renee back there? Huh? They work diligently at the music. Why? Because we're here to honor the Lord. We're here to praise Him and to worship Him even through music. These, mus these things may not be ringing right now, but I tell you what, He is pleased in what we're doing. Amen. I know that He is. I know that He is. Amen? It's like they say, Look, let us go into the house of the Lord. Let us go into the house of the Lord. My God, people, that's a privilege. Yes, that's a privilege to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen? It's like back in the days, man, I, and I think I've shared this with all of you guys, when, 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 the, when, the, when the priests and the Levites and all the people were inside the gates in the temple, preparing the temple, preparing everything, and the musicians were up on the walls and the tambourines were getting ready and the people were outside, man, and the gates were breathing like this. Mira, <laughs> The gates were breathing like this, and the people were pushing and pushing. Let us in. Let us in. Let us in into the temple. <coughs> oh, my God, people. One of these days. One of these days. Thank you. One of these days, people are going to run to church because there's going to be a great need for the church. Start practicing those things before somebody takes your chair. People are going to be standing against the wall. I'm picturing that right now. You should have been here at 11, not at 11.01. I, I never understand why people come to church late. Why do they walk in in the last song of worship? You're worshiping the Lord, people. You're not worshiping me or Pastor Marcia. You're worshiping the Lord to stand in his presence, to lift up holy hands and give him a praise or a song of praise to thank him through music. Amen. Amen. To lift up his holy name? Look, God is holy. Amen? Amen. Look at the apostles. In, it, it talks about in the book of Revelations. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Holy is the Lord God. And they would sing that song. Oh, and they never got tired of it. Amen? Remember when you used to play your 45s? Huh? And you used to sing Angel Baby like 10, 15 times? Huh? And you pick up the needle and put it back over there and angel baby. And then you play it again, angel baby, and you play it again. Pretty soon you broke the record. And then when you couldn't find that record again, you put a little bit of polish on it. See, you guys don't remember those things. I do. Because my sisters had all that. And they used to sing all these oldie but goodies. And I used to see them all there, and, you know, and I, I was just soaking all this in. And, oh, my God. I 
and to sing a song unto the Lord? Forget about the angels and the babies. Sing a new song. Let the Lord put a new song in your mouth. And start singing to the Lord. Amen. He says, he has put a new song in my mouth. Praise to our God. Many will see it and fear and will trust in the Lord. You know, just again, trusting in the Lord through worship and, and praising. Huh? You know that you can get your healing through praising and worship? You know that you can get your breakthroughs? Don't you know that when you're praising God and you're truly, truly meditating on what's being sung and played or whatever, you know that you don't have any room in your mind to think about what's going on out there. You're standing in His presence. You're standing in His presence. Amen? And you're raising up holy hands. This is a point of surrender. I give it all to you, Lord, because you're worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be honored. You're worthy to, for your name to be lifted up in this place, Lord. Right. Amen? Amen? So let's start putting our trust in God. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, let's go. Oh, yeah, thank you, Jesus. Go over to the book of Hebrews. No, we're not cooking coffee or nothing, okay? In the book of Hebrews, chapter 4. No, I'm going to go to chapter 3. I got time to do this. Amen. Amen. Hebrews chapter 3, starting in verse 1. He says, Therefore, holy brethren. Hmm. He's calling us holy. Amen. Holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling. He says, Consider the apostle and the high priest of our confession, Christ Jesus. Because he was the first true apostle. That came into being. You know without Christ there would be no church. Without Christ there wouldn't be a church. He was the first true apostle. Because he started the church. Can you imagine John standing in the river Jordan. And all of a sudden here comes the apostle. Christ Jesus. Walking into the water. Huh? He says behold. He says the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Woo. Oh, my God, people, who takes the sins of the world. Amen. I can guarantee you something in here right now that everybody that's in this room has sin. Sinners. A bunch of sinners. Amen. We've all sinned. We have all sinned. Don't act like you're all that holy. Amen. Amen. It's like it told you in the book of Revelation. Repent and do the works of the Father. Do the first works. Amen. He says, Therefore, holy brother and partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and the high priest of our confession, Christ Jesus. I'm talking about the blessed assurance today. Who was faithful. No, who was faithful to him who appointed him as Moses also was faithful in all his house. My God, people, you know what it takes to become faithful in the house of God? Man, to be faithful in the house of God in all things? Like my wife says, we got a lot of learning to do. Don't we? Oh, everybody said amen to that one. I heard it. I even heard an echo. Amen. 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 There it goes. Who was faithful to him, who appointed him as Moses also was faithful in his house. For this one has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he who built the house has more honor than the house. Every house is built by someone, but he who built all things is God. Amen. And Moses indeed was faithful in all his house as a what? A servant. You know that a servant of God is not supposed to be complaining? Amen. 
I'm looking at everybody. Okay, how many complainers do we have in here? Raise your hand if you complain at one time or another. See, you're being, you're being truthful. I complain too. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not 100% faithful. I complain about a lot of things. Amen? Don't complain about the weather, you guys, because you can't change it. But that's God. And we're not God. Amen? And Moses indeed was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of the things which would be spoken afterwards. But Christ, tell somebody, but Christ. God, don't you love that? Nobody but Christ. But Christ as a son over his own house, whose house we are. Oh my God, people. There's the blessed assurance right there. Amen. Whose house we are if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm to the end. And verse 7, therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, no, as the Holy Spirit says, no, as the Holy Spirit says, today, Sunday morning, okay, October 10th, 1246, if you hear His voice, do not harden your hearts. No te pongas bien duro. Don't get all heart hardened. Amen. Do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. You know that when you get mad, your heart gets hard. Don't we? Yeah, everybody say an amen to that too. Now I know who gets mad. We all do. Your heart gets hard. You don't want to have nothing. Don't tell nothing. I know nothing like Schultz. I know nothing. <laughs> nothing, 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 nothing. I know nothing. <laughs> Amen? Do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion, in the day of trial in the wilderness. See, you don't have to go out into the wilderness to have a trial, people. You could be going through a trial right now. And maybe, why are you going through this trial? Did you harden your heart? Let me see. That's what it says right there. Do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion in the day of trial. See? You got to read through the lines, people. Amen? Where your fathers tested me and tried me and saw my works for 40 years. Therefore, he says, I was angry with that generation. And I said, they always go astray in their hearts. And they have not known my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. My God, people, if God showed up in your life at one time and he never showed up again, would you give up on God? No, how could you? How could you abuse the blessings after you've been blessed? Huh? Why do you want to go out there and walk and do your thing? Huh? Didn't God bless you when you ask for a blessing? Then don't worry about what happens tomorrow. Amen? He says, Beware, brother, unless there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Amen? But exhort one another daily. Come on, people. I get sick and tired of Christians fighting with one another. Exhort one another. Encourage one another. Amen? Who gave you the right to say whatever you're saying because they're not living up to your standards up here? I know all of these and thou's. I never see you reading the word. I never see you doing this and I never see you doing this. Puro picar. Man, quit poking at me. Quit doing all this to me. You don't know, you don't know, you don't know me. You don't know what I'm going through. Maybe I don't want to share what I'm feeling. Maybe I just don't want to share with you because you're going to go and tell somebody. <laughs> well, you know my husband. <laughs> well, I thought he was my husband. He's supposed to be protecting me. He's supposed to be... Uh, guarded me. 
He's supposed to, I am supposed to have security with him. I'm, he's supposed to be my security guard, standing at the door, not letting nobody come in. So this is all the men. Where do you think you're going? No, where do you think you're going? Nope, nobody passes through this gate till I say so. Nobody comes into my house with all your mess. Leave your junk outside. This is not the junkyard. This is the house of God. We're supposed to be security guards. I'm talking to the man. And if you're single ladies, protect your doorways. Protect your hearts, ladies. Don't let nobody come with all this blink, blink. Driving up in a Cadillac. With a lean machine. <laughs> protect your home. Protect your, right. mira. Protect your marriage, people. Right. you got to have some, some kind of security. Protect your finances, your health, and everything that's about you. Do I look good in this hat? Yeah. Okay, I'm protecting this church. <laughs> I'm the security guard here. Yeah. I always tell everybody, is the front door locked? Yeah, it's locked. Two weeks ago, they left it open. So I, I can only point two fingers over there and over here. Oh, back there, too. He's got a key. Who else has a key? Renee has a key. Everybody that has a key, I'm pointing your fingers to you. You better not leave that door open again. Amen? Don't you know that everybody that has a key to the church is responsible for the church? Oh, let's pretend it's your house. And you left the doors wide open because you put a sign that says, open house. <laughs> Amen. Protect what God has blessed you with. Because you may not have it again. Amen. Sometimes in life, it only comes around one time. Amen? Take care of what God has blessed you with, people. Amen? Yeah. It says, verse 12, Hebrews 3, 12, he says, Beware, brethren, lest there be any of you with an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers. No, partakers. Hmm. Of Christ, if we hold the beginning of our confidence with steadfastness to the end. While it says, today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. As it is in the rebellion. For who having heard rebelled indeed was not in it at all who came out of Egypt and was led by Moses. Now with whom? Was he angry with for 40 years? Can you imagine God being angry with you? Huh? Was it not with those who sinned, whose corpses fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who did not obey? So we see that they could not enter because of what? Unbelief, people. Oh my God, people. Unbelief, you mean you're saved, you're spirit filled, you're born again, and you're allowing unbelief to come and it turns into sin? And the wages of sin is what? You want to lose your spiritual life with God? Because you, I, I want, I need. Amen. Hebrews 4, we're going there. How many people want? How many people want the promise of God in your lives? You know that He can bring rest into your souls, into your minds, into your heart. He can bring rest into your homes, people. There's people in here right now that need a little bit of rest in their homes. Huh? When's the best time of the day for you? When you sit down and you're just at rest. 
My best time is when I hit my head on that pillow and I feel my angel baby scratching my back. Like, <laughs> I'm out in five minutes, people. That's not the best time. You know why? Because I have fulfilled my day. Yes. Now I'm at rest. Now God is giving me rest. Oh, you guys will get that on the way home. I don't want nobody falling asleep. The pastor said we could rest. <laughs> oh, let's take five. Amen. It says, therefore, since a promise remains of entering this rest, let us fear lest any of you seem to have come short of it. For indeed, the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word, tell somebody, but the word. But the word. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'll wake you up. Man, if the word is in you, you don't need rest. Amen. He says, but the words which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed up with faith in those who heard. Oh, my God, people, you're going to allow something to come on and mix your faith? No, seriously. How many faith people do we have in here? So don't let nothing come in and mix you up. Amen. And don't say, well, I didn't know. Because you did know. Amen. Not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. For we who have believed do enter that rest. See? As he has said, so I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Although the works were finished from the foundation of the world, for he has spoken in a certain place of the seventh day in this way, and God rested on the seventh day from all his works. Amen? Since therefore... It remains that some must enter it, and those to those whom it first was preached and did not enter because of what? Disobedience. Disobedience. How could you be resting God if you're being disobedient to the Word of God? No, seriously. How can you rest in the Lord when you're being disobedient to the Lord? Is there any kind of peace in your mind and your heart? When you're being disobedient to God? No, no, you're, there, there, is no, there is no rest. Man, your mind is going like this. Mira, en pura vueltas. Your mind's going in and out. You got all these crazy thoughts coming in because you're not at rest. Why? Because somewhere down the line, you became disobedient to the word of God and you did something that wasn't supposed to be doing. Again, he says he designates or he points out a certain day, saying, in David, today, after such a long time, it has been said, look, today, if you hear his voice, do not harm your hearts. Amen? Amen. For if Joshua had given them rest, then he would have not afterwards have spoken of another day. Can you imagine if the people would have given up when they were marching around Jericho, huh? When the Lord told Joshua and Joshua went and told the people, huh? Can you imagine if only just maybe a few went? But they all went. Because they heard from God. They knew that Joshua was right. They knew that Joshua was hearing from God. So they marched around. Seven days they marched around. Then on the seventh day they marched around seven days. Then they blew the trumpets and the walls came down. Oh, man, maybe you'll get it on the way home. Huh? Why? Because they were obedient. You know what happens when you walk in the obedience of God, people? You know that God has blessings stored up for you and lined up for you? No, he really does. The Lord himself right now has blessings in your name, and all he's waiting is for you to get in line with his word. Amen? Amen? Seriously, he really does, people. Remember when he told Moses, he said, I'm taking you to a land of milk and honey. Guess what? Everything was already prepared for them. You know why? Because the word says that the vineyards were planted. The houses were built. The houses were paneled. Everything, man, God already had it all set up for them. But they became disobedience and they were lost in the wilderness because of their unbelief. Oh my God, people. Right. 
For if Joshua had given them, Hebrews 4 and 8, had given them rest, then he would not afterwards have spoken of another day. There, there remains therefore a rest for the people of God. For he who has entered his rest has himself also seized from his works as God did from his. Let us therefore be what? Diligent. Come on, you guys. Just follow through. You make a promise to God, then follow through. Just follow through. Just follow through. Don't worry about who's sitting next to you. You do what God has told you to do. Don't harden your heart. Amen? If you've got to walk alone, then walk alone. Amen? Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same examples of disobedience. Here it comes, people. Verse 12. For the word of God is living, and it's powerful, and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing, it says, even to the division of soul and spirit. Amen. And the joints and marrow. And it's discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. You know what this word can do to you? Dissect you. Dissect you. Let's really look and see what's in his heart. Let's cut him up. Let's see what's in his heart. Let's see what's really in there. Huh? Is there still some stuff? Let me let the Lord go deep into your heart. My God. You know, pulls it out with a finger. I knew it was there. <laughs> and he sews you back up and stitches you back up and he gives you a new heart. Now you've got a clean heart. Whew. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of the soul and spirit and joints and marrow, and as discerner of the thoughts and tents of the heart. And there is no creature. He's talking about us. He's not talking about animals. <laughs> well, maybe we act like animals sometimes. Maybe you smell like one too. Hope you're not a skunk. And there is no creature hidden from his sight. But tell somebody, but all things. But all things. But all things are naked and open to the eyes of him. We're not singing the eyes of Texas are on you people. We're talking about the eyes of God. Wake up, people. Abren los ojitos. Who's got blue eyes? Open up them big baby blue eyes. Oh, mira, brother, Jim has blue eyes. You better wake up, brother, and open up them baby blues. You got blue eyes, don't you? Well, you better open up them green eyes. And brown eyes and black eyes. What? Well, don't give me a black eye. <laughs> Amen. And there is no creature hidden from his sight. <laughs> and there is no creature hidden from his sight. But all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give what? A uh, what? We better wake up, people. We better wake up to what the Word of God is saying. He's trying to get us ready, people. These are words of encouragement, of exhortation, people. Amen. And you may find some rebuke in here, too. No le hace. Maybe we need to be rebuked from the Lord. Maybe we need to be chastised from God. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you people, remember what I shared from the beginning? That terrible spirit that's out there? Don't let these terrible things fall on you. Amen? You know, the other day me and my wife were hearing this teaching on, 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 on the, the spirit of death. Did you get it too, huh, Jesus? You know what brings in? You know what brings in the spirit of death? And I'm not talking about dying naturally. I'm talking about 
Your marriage can die. Your finances can die. Your health can die. You know what brings that in? Lawlessness. Doing something that is not right in the sight of God. What part of that? I don't know. I don't know who's doing what or whatever. But this is why the Lord says, repent daily, people. Because we may be sinning through our eyes. We may not voice it. We may not step into it or, or give into it. But we may still be sinning through our eyes. We may be sinning through our ears because of all the mess that we're hearing. And you may be sinning through your mouth. Because you're speaking things that you're not supposed to be talking about. Look, don't get wrapped up with anything. You're not a tamale. <laughs> Amen? Well, tell somebody, I am blessed, I am blessed. with the assurance of God. Assurance of Let's stand up and pray. It's 106. Brother Rudy's buying tamales for everybody. All right, Rudy. You spoke it, so we believe it. <laughs> no, we don't want little tamales. That's what you would buy us, Marcus. Amen. Well, thank you again for being here this morning. I hope you enjoyed the message and the word of God. Thank you, Pastor Marcia and the worship team for all that you do to honor the Lord. Amen. Well, we hope to see you Wednesday night. Amen. Pray for us. Uh, yeah. We want to lift up uh, Roberta's family and Erica and they lost one of their loved ones. Amen. But well, like Erica said, uh, She's in a better place, but we want her in this place. It's not up to you. Amen. Don't you know that death is only the beginning of a new life? And we should be rejoicing. Yeah, we get sorrow and grief and everything because we're emotional people. Our emotions get hit. Our inner man gets hit with the hurt and the pain and the grieving. Amen. So let's pray for Brother Jesse. Jesse needs our prayers. He's been going through a lot this year, physically. Amen. And we need to pray that God will send the right people into his pathway. We also want to thank Sister Roberta because she goes down there every morning and helps Sister Annie. Amen. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you right now, Father God, for Brother Jesse. And Annie, Father God, we send your word into that hospital room, Father. I pray that you, Father God, would give the surgeons, Father God, everything that they need, Father God, to cure this man, Father God, in the name of Jesus. But we send your word, Father, because you said it was by your word, Father God, it's by your stripes that we have been healed, Father. For you are Jehovah Rapha, the great healer, Father. So we thank you right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord Father, as he lays in that hospital room, Father. I pray right now that you give him a visitation, Father God, of your healing powers, Father. And we thank you right now that everything that is not supposed to be in his body would be dissolved, Father. Removed, Father God. Continue to give him long life, Father God, a longer life. He desires to be in church. He desires to be in this place, Father. So we thank you for Jesse right now, Father God, and everyone else. We pray right now, Father God, for Margaret's family right now, Father God. I pray that you would bring peace, comfort, and rest, Father God, into their hearts, their mind, and their souls, Father God, in Jesus' name, Father God. And we thank you, Father God, and let your will be done in our lives, Father. And we thank you for your word, Father God. We thank you for your word. It's your word. It's your word that is alive, Father God, that you came to give us life. To give it to us more abundantly, Father. So I pray right now, Father God, as we leave this place, Father God, that you protect us on the road and off the road through the highways and byways, Father. That you bring us back home safely, Father God, into this place, Father God. As we congregate with one another and break bread with you, Father. 
Speak the blood of Jesus upon every home and every hostel that is here right now, Father God, in Jesus' name. We give you all the glory and all the honor, Father God, because of who you are and what you are, Father. In Jesus' name, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. You brought tamales? What? 